Don't look away. The pandemic has reached your local grocery store. Everything from viruses, bacteria, and other pathogens can reside in uncovered concrete surfaces. 2020 is the year of the pandemic and pathogens throughout the world. Stay tuned as we cover the top ways concrete can make you sick and the one easy fix that your local grocery store doesn't even know about. Viruses, bacteria, fungi. These are all harmful pathogens that when come in contact with humans can cause serious and even deadly diseases. This includes severe food poisoning, strep throat, staph and skin infections, pneumonia, and blood poisoning, to name a few. What do all these pathogens have in common? They are all flourishing in your grocery stores as we speak. Millions of pathogens are growing in concrete and ready to attach to a new host with the slightest touch. In grocery stores, proper cleaning protocol is rarely executed and even worse, rarely effective. Departments like meat and dairy aren't able to properly clean due to the size and weight of the equipment. This means that animal blood and even feces containing E. coli, salmonella, listeria, and more are sitting in wait for human transmission. Transmission can happen with a single touch point to any infected surface. Pathogen from the floor attaching to a shoe, human takes off the shoe, transmission. Drop your keys, transmission. Worker restocking the shelves, transmission. These touch points leave humans extremely vulnerable to the thriving pathogens just below their feet. Concrete is one of the oldest and most versatile materials used for the construction of civilizations throughout time. Despite its wide use, there are a manifold of issues that reduce the service life of concrete leading to premature failure of exposed concrete floors. Concrete is comprised of three basic materials, water, cement, and a granular skeleton consisting of a coarse and fine aggregate. In a liquid state, concrete can be discharged from a concrete mixer, down concrete chutes, into formwork, and finished up by 4.30 on a Friday afternoon. As concrete is cured, it goes through its hardening process. The composite material is made up of a softer matrix that embeds elongated aggregate. The binding matrix which makes up concrete is a hardened sponge. The unfortunate reality is that this hardened sponge exhibits a wicking and capillary absorption which drives in more deleterious materials than the water that is the transfer media. Pathogens depositing not only on the concrete surface but leaching into the subsurface and then body of the concrete begin to grow and then spread to the outside environment. There's a common misconception that polishing concrete will densify the surface. Now when concrete has been polished, we are ultimately causing the material to crack. The unfortunate reality is that polishing does damage the concrete, especially we're looking at moisture and more deleterious materials like pathogens migrating through those micro cracks into the surface and subsurface of the concrete. There are a wide variety of sealers that are used to close up the concrete surface. Everything from waxes to urethanes. Now the life of a sealer is based not only on the application, but also the use of the concrete surface. We have a few photos here that show not only the brand new sealed concrete surface, but an aged concrete surface that has been sealed. Bear in mind these sealed surfaces are from interior concrete slabs. Unfortunately, when most of the concrete sealers go down, we can't tell how well the sealers have gone down on the concrete surface unless there are white pigment sealers. Now normally, these types of sealers are used on exterior and not interior concrete surfaces. The next thing that we must do is be cognizant of once the sealers are in place, the impact of repetitive loading. This repetitive loading can break down the sealer within one season. Now if there is steel wheel traffic, hard wheel traffic, 
this breakdown of the sealer can be exacerbated compared to pedestrian foot traffic. Furthermore, if there is excessive cleaning, the sealers, just like the concrete, can break down. And once water, cleaning product, and abrasive forces from the equipment that cleans the concrete, we see that the sealer breakdown can be even more severe and shorten the service life. The effects of a damaged sealer as they relate to pathogen contamination and damage to the concrete sealer causes a singularity effect. This means that pathogens on the surface have a tendency to migrate towards the damaged spot and leach into the concrete surface and the body of the concrete. Again, this cannot be seen. And when the pathogens do migrate under the sealer, no amount of cleaning products will be able to get the pathogens out of underneath the sealer until the sealer is degraded off. Now, with the impact of resealing, especially if the original floor is not cleaned, ripped and stripped of the initial seal coat, then we could be sealing in those pathogens, ultimately causing more issues down the road. Resilient flooring systems are designed to add a protective layer on top of the hardened concrete sponge to shield the body of the concrete from harmful chemical and physical attack. Contrary to the permeable nature of concrete, vinyl is a hydrophobic material that repels water and stops pathogens from attaching to or absorbing through the surface. As mentioned, concrete is extremely permeable and allows harmful pathogens to grow on and within the surface. Utilizing vinyl protects the concrete and therefore stops pathogens from invading the concrete body. By preventing the spread of bacteria through the top layer, disinfectants and regular cleanings can kill harmful pathogens before they are transferred to humans. Additionally, cleaning vinyl does not cause the degradation that we see on concrete surfaces when extreme cleaning protocols are in place. To test the absorption of different grits of polished concrete and vinyl floor coverings, we performed ASTM C1585 as well as area fraction analysis to determine pathogen growth on each surface. ASTM C1585 measured the absorption due to capillary rise and ultimately the penetrability of the pore system of the concrete. We found that vinyl flooring outperformed the polished concrete samples and that polished grit had no effect on the absorption. From these results, we can deduce that vinyl flooring is more resistant to the absorption and migration of pathogens. We then exposed all samples to a simulated bacterial growth environment and performed area fraction analysis to determine the amount of pathogens present on the surface of the samples. We found that vinyl flooring had the least amount of pathogens at the surface. So what is the answer? The very solution that has been a mainstay in hospitals and schools throughout the world for the last few decades. Vinyl covered concrete floors have served as a protective barrier to prevent unnecessary illnesses in critical environments like hospitals and schools. Your local grocery store is next on the list.